Hey, Steve Stretsky here. As always, this is a Canadian real estate market update with a particular focus on Vancouver. If you get any sort of value or entertainment out of these videos, all I ask is that you hit thumbs up and subscribe. Appreciate the support. As always, uh, if you have any questions, comments, put those below and we'll bounce your back and forth. A um, couple things before we get into it. This is probably gonna be a little bit of a longer video. Um, some numbers coming out of the Vancouver real estate market for the month of June, as well as the Toronto. So I kind of want to touch on those markets a little bit. Obviously, we're, again, we're focusing on Vancouver here, but um, another thing before we get into it, if you want uh, to release the June edition of the Soretsky Report, which is basically a detailed analysis for the entire month of June, um, all in one simple, easy to read PDF. So I'll put a link to that where you can go and download it. Uh, as well, if you wanna do me a huge favor, uh, I'm working on building up some Google reviews. Uh, it just kinda of helps with SEO and uh, just trying to build up that presence sort of in the Google sphere. I've been kind of ignoring it. Uh, but again, I'm gonna put a link to that as well. If you can go over there and shoot me a positive review, uh, I would really appreciate that. Uh, try not to ask for too much, but uh, that would be a huge help. Um, but anyways, yeah, breaking it into it, uh, into the market, as always, um, just to put, put things into context, because I always get people saying, uh, you know, some people will shoot me a message, say, oh, you know, you're too bearish. Some people say, oh, you know, you need to be more bearish and, and tell people not to buy. And you have to understand it's a very fine line. You're still running a business and a profession here. Um, for someone as myself that's, you know, carrying listings, you can't be going out there and telling people uh, the end of the world is coming to an end and nobody should buy any real estate. Uh, I think everybody's individual uh, situation is very different. And uh, so I try to be very objective and just provide the facts and then let people make their own decisions. Uh, so hopefully you understand where that's coming from. Uh, looking at the, starting with the Vancouver detached housing market, I've mentioned this has been the trend and you're always sort of looking at sales and sales volumes. Um, so again, for the city of Vancouver, June uh, sales for the month of June, uh, again, hit a 27 year low. That's as far back as my data goes to 1991 before uh, basically the real estate board wasn't really collecting good reliable data uh, in the 80s. So my data only goes back to 91, that is actually reliable. Uh, so there's never been this few of detached sales for the month of June. Um, and even if we extrapolate that further out uh, for, for the second quarter, if you're gonna go ahead and compare the second quarter of 2018 versus the second quarter of 2017, all the way dating back to 91, uh, it was the fewest amount of detached home sales in the city of Vancouver, but, Again, people will say, well, that's the city of Vancouver. You know, my suburbs are doing a little bit better, da, 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 da. Um, if you actually look at the Greater Vancouver as a whole, the entire real estate board of Greater Vancouver, um, those detached home sales, again, were also for the second quarter of 2018, hit a 27-year low. So this detached housing market slowdown it has rippled through uh, not just Vancouver, but the entire lower mainland. Um, Prices, again, are subjective. Everybody has their own opinion on that. I'm not really overly focused or going to argue uh, what's happening with prices, but I think certainly you can imagine that uh, when home sales fall to near 30 year lows and inventory jumps roughly 30%, uh, and is now at its highest pace since 2012, you can kind of put the two and two together. There's gonna be downwards pressure on prices. And I, I see that trend continuing. You have to remember that this was a, this is supposed to be the busy time of the market. It's, you know, this is the spring selling season. So now we're entering into the back half uh, of the selling season where you have, in the fall, you have a speculation tax coming here in BC. Uh, I would expect the Bank of Canada to hike interest rates next week. Um, so you're gonna have that coming in as well and, and that mortgage stress test still ripping its way through the system. So I'm not really sure how that detached market is suddenly just gonna shift course this late in the credit cycle. Um, so I think there's more downwards pressure to come. I guess one silver lining for that market uh, was that new listings for the detached space actually fell in June to a 13 year low for the month of June. So uh, I think what's happening is basically sellers are sort of holding off, uh, they're taking their house off the market, they can't sell, they're you know, relisting it, uh, trying to get it sold. Some are saying, ah, I'll wait till next year, maybe the market will, will rebound, pick back up. Um, so you're seeing the new listings come off and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. But again, despite new listings coming down to a 13 year low, inventory still increased 
significantly, and that is really due to uh, just a lack of demand. There's simply no sales. So uh, shifting courses into the condo market, again, that's been the resilient uh, space of the of the market um, condo sales for the month of June uh, in the city of Vancouver dropped down to a five-year low um, they're certainly weakening across greater Vancouver and into the Fraser Valley um, that being said if you look at uh, Vancouver condo prices what are they doing today uh, you can clearly see that there's been some price deceleration uh, this is the average price per square foot and uh, that is now, it's showing a 5% increase on a year over year basis. Um, you have to remember, put that into context, uh, you know, where's that trend line going? Um, we're, over the last couple of years, we're used to, you know, 30% year over year price growth. To see it go from basically 30% down to 5% kind of shows me uh, where this trend is heading. And obviously a five year low in sales, it allowed inventory to jump up uh, by 30% year over year. And then you have new, uh, you have a record number of housing units under construction. Uh, the, the most recent data shows that units under construction is by far, by far a new record. Uh, it's actually 3.6 times uh, greater, the standard deviation above the long-term average for a number of units being built. So you have sales in the condo space uh, declining. The demand is simply not as great as it was. Um, and you have new uh, inventory starting to build along with that record number of new supply coming and you know it's interesting just to see this market shift I think really in April we saw a noticeable uh, shift in the condo market even in the Fraser Valley I've been watching that closely speaking with some of the realtor contacts out there um, I think one of the cases just looking at that space is just to see how it just went like that uh, over the last couple months Langley Condos, um, you know, increased 40% year over year just a couple months ago. Um, inventory in June shot up, I believe it was 112% year over year. Um, now it's still below sort of historical norms, but you had inventory jump 112% year over year in the condo space. Uh, I think sales came off about 30%. Um, and, and you're just seeing that, I mean, you again, just speak with realtors there that are experts in that area, um, telling me that condo prices are actually coming off, um, you know, two, three, four percent from their peak prices about three or four months ago. Um, it's that, that's just a very quick shift. I believe the sales to active ratio is down close to around 20% now, which is pretty much a balanced market. Uh, in that Langley area. I even saw someone sent me this today just asking, you know, hey, what's the deal with this? Uh, it was a two bedroom condo in Langley. It was basically at the entry level point and they were offering a $10,000 uh, cash back to the buyer for either to help you with your mortgage payments or to help you renovate the place. Um, but this was an entry level condo that uh, looking at most recent sales in the building, you know, it wasn't overpriced by any stretch. Uh, offering a $10,000 bonus. Again, that's just one example, but you're starting to see uh, definitely a change, a shift in the market where it would have been unfathomable to think that someone was gonna get a 10K cash back uh, on a condo in, in, in the suburbs uh, even four months ago, six months ago. Um, so we'll be watching that space very carefully. Um, but again, what, you know, one thing with all of this is you're always just looking at what are the trends in the market. You know, someone as myself that's helping buyers, helping sellers, that's actively myself in the market as well. Uh, always looking at deals, seeing what's available. Um, you try to, you have to be really, you have to try to be objective and pull your emotions out of it, regardless of which direction that you want the market to go. So you're always sort of looking for different data points. And I think, unfortunately, is many people get caught up in the very micro, they're looking month to month, they're looking, uh, you know, well, what are prices? Yeah, sales are down 30 year lows, yeah, whatever, what, what are prices? And it's like, well, like, man, like, you have a 30 year low, low, low in sales, are we just gonna sweep that under the rug and think there's gonna be zero repercussions and, and it's just gonna go like this? Uh, to me, I'm, again, you're looking at that trend, a 30-year low in sales, the inventory on the rise. To me, this looks like a classic real estate cycle where you have 
sales you had a huge you had your huge boom and now you're pulling demand out 30 year lows inventory starts increasing at the same time that you have a record number of new housing units hitting the market over the next two years uh and higher higher interest rates coming you're very very late uh in this economic expansion uh you know people act like it's the end of the world like as if recession is the end of the world or if a, a decline in real estate prices is the end of the world it's not these things happen and you just have to understand where you're at in the, in the cycle um this, i mean looking at some of the toronto headlines it, it's funny seeing one of the uh, rbc guys uh, he came out uh, yesterday saying that the bottom was in for Toronto real estate. Uh, that you know anyone hoping for lower prices, it's over. Uh, this is the same guy that a couple weeks earlier in, in his reports is telling you know shareholders that they're expecting their mortgage orig originations get cut in half at the back in the second half of this year and moving forward in the coming years. So you're telling me the mortgage originations are going to get cut in half. Interest rates are going up. You're basically in the eighth or ninth inning of this economic expansion. Uh, unemployment's at record lows, so it really doesn't have anywhere to go but up. Uh, again, people get caught up in the, in the, in the micro, uh, I think. So it's just interesting to sort of see some of the headlines coming out of Toronto because they had, uh, I guess, a, 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 what looked on paper as maybe a decent month. I guess you're comparing it to sort of like the uh, sudden f f crash that they sort of had last year. Um, but again, I mean, where's that trending? I, I think with, with tighter lending conditions there, with rates going up, very late in the expansion again re recessions are going to come they're going to happen and those tend to weigh on housing markets uh recessions are almost a lot of the times caused by housing markets uh so again it's sort of the same thing right to expect uh sales to just plummet nationally by 16 to 20 percent uh and not expect any sort of economic repercussions out of that when you have uh construction and the fire sector driving uh much of Canada's economic growth uh, I, I think is I think, just don't think people understand the data and, and I think that's one of the things too is people say well you know if there's only more data in real estate if we only had more access to sold prices but at, at the end of the day it's like you can have all the sold data and all the information but people if you can't interpret you know what the data means or, or understand what how a real estate cycle functions it's pretty much irrelevant it's it's the same people I mean if you go look at the stock market you can go and have it you can have a Bloomberg terminal and have all the information right at your fingertips uh, at the end of the day there's still people losing thousands and millions of dollars in the stock market so um, it's always just about interpreting that data nobody truly knows or, or can get everything correct to 100% but uh, just be careful about uh, words and sources and where they're coming from again it's coming from the RBC guy who has a you know I mean he's, he owns corporate stock this guy that's which is gonna fund the guy's retirement uh, I don't know and you look at uh, yeah anyways it's interesting I look at uh, the United States uh, you have to understand that these people it doesn't make sense to to scare people and to say that you foresee lower house prices or you foresee a recession or whatever I mean it's the same thing as I believe was you know Ben Bernanke in the States what is it six months before the financial crisis that they didn't foresee a recession uh, that the housing market was recovering uh, and then all of a sudden you know in, in September the, the whole thing just rolled over so um, but again, you have to think about it. Like, if you're Ben Bernanke, what are you going to come out and say? Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to see a recession. House prices are going to fall in it, uh, nationally by ten percent. Probably wouldn't be a good thing for public confidence. But um, I think for investors and people that want to make money, uh, you have to be able to to source out reliable sources and and filter your information that's coming in, right? Um, so everyone's you know you do your own homework, and so what it is. Uh, anyways. Hope that helped. Uh, as always, welcome your comments, and we'll see you next week.